Welcome back to CNN's Republican presidential debate at the Reagan Library here in Simi Valley, Califor Simi Valley, California. Many people on social media wanted us to ask about marijuana legalization. Senator Paul, Governor Christie recently said, quote, if you're getting high in Colorado today where marijuana has been legalized, enjoy it until January 2017 because I will enforce the federal laws against marijuana. Will you? I think one of the great problems and what the American people don't like about politics is hypocrisy. People who have one standard for others and not for, them, for themselves. There's at least one prominent example on the stage of someone who says they smoked pot in high school. And yet the people who are going to, to, to jail for this are poor people, often African Americans and often Hispanics, and yet the rich kids who use drugs aren't. I personally think that this is a crime for which the only victim is the individual. And I think that America has to take a different attitude. I'd like to see more rehabilitation and less incarceration. I'm a fan of the drug courts, which try to direct you back towards work and less time in jail. But the bottom line is the states, we say we like the 10th Amendment until we start talking about this. And I think the federal government's gone too far. I think that the war on drugs has had a racial outcome and really has been something that's really damaged our inner cities. Not only do the drugs damage them, we damage them again by incarcerating them and then preventing them from getting employment over time. So I don't think that the federal government should override the states. I believe in the Tenth Amendment, and I really will say that the states are left to themselves. I want to give that. I want to give the person that you call the hypocrite uh, an opportunity to respond. Do you want to identify that person? Well, I think if we left it open, we could see how many people smoke pot in high school. <laughs> Is there somebody you were specifically thinking of? Well, you know, the thing is, he was is talking that, about me. Yeah, I was talking That's about... That's what I thought, so, but well, I wanted let me, to say let, it. Well, I, I wanted to point, make me... it easier for him, yeah. okay. and I just did. Governor Bush, please. So 40 years ago, I smoked marijuana, uh, and I admit it. I'm sure that other people might have done it and may not want to say it in front of 25 million people. My mom's not happy that I just did. <laughs> That's true. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. We have, we have a serious epidemic of drugs that goes way beyond marijuana. What goes on in Colorado, as far as I'm concerned, that should be a state decision. But if you look at the problem of drugs in this, in this society today, it's a serious problem. Rand, you know this because you're campaigning in New Hampshire, like all of us, and you see the epidemic of heroin, the overdoses of heroin that's taking place. People's families are, are being torn apart. It is appropriate for the government to play a consistent role to be able to provide more treatment, more prevention, May, we're the state that has the most uh, drug courts across every circuit in, in, in Florida. There are drug courts to give people a second chance. That's the best way to do this. But let, let me respond. The thing is, is that in Florida, Governor Bush campaigned against medical marijuana. That means that a small child like Morgan Hintz that has 500 seizures a day is failing on nine traditional medications, is not allowed to use cannabis oil, and that if they attempt to do that in Florida, they will take the child away, they will put the parents in jail, and that's what that means. If you're against allowing people to use medical marijuana, you'll actually put them in jail. Right, and actually, under the current circumstances, kids who had privilege like you do don't go to jail, but the poor kids in our inner, inner cities go to jail. I don't think that's fair, and I think that we need to acknowledge it, and it is hypocritical to still want to put poor people in jail. I don't want get, to put and, poor people in jail, Rand. Well, you vote, you, here's you, the deal. You, you oppose medical Here, marijuana? No, opposed, I did not oppose when the legislature passed the bill to deal with that very issue. That's the way to solve this problem. The medical marijuana on the ballot was opened up. It was a, there was a huge loophole. And it was the first step towards getting to a Colorado place. And as a citizen of Florida, I voted no. But let's, that means no. you'll put people let's in jail. I want to go right now. Wait, wait, I want to go right Jay, now. I Jay, you, brought me, you brought my issue up. That's issue, true. Go right? ahead, Christine, I mean, please. You know, I, I enjoyed the interplay. Thank you, gentlemen. I, I just say this. You know, first off, New Jersey is the first state in the nation that now says if you are a nonviolent, non-dealing drug user, that you don't go to jail for your first offense. You go to mandatory treatment. You see, as Jake, I'm pro-life. And I think you need to be pro-life for more than just the time in the womb. It gets a lot tougher when they get out of the womb. And when they're the 16-year-old drug addict on the floor of the county lockup, that life is just as precious as the life in the womb. And so that's why I'm for rehabilitation, why I think the war on drugs has been a failure. But I'll end with this. That doesn't mean we should be legalizing gateway drugs. And if Senator Paul thinks that the only victim is the person, 
Look at the decrease in productivity. Look at the way people get used and move on to other drugs when they use marijuana as a gateway drug. It's not them that they're the only victims. Their families are the victims, too. Their children are the victims, too. And their employers are the victims also. And that's why I'll enforce the federal law, while you can still put an emphasis on rehabilitation, now, which you've done in New Jersey. Yeah, you may respond, and then I'll bring in you, Ms. Fiorina. Understand what they're saying. If they're going to say we are going to enforce the federal law against what the state law is, they aren't really believing in the Tenth Amendment. Governor Christie would go into Colorado, and if you're breaking any federal law on marijuana, even though the state law allows it, he would put you in jail. If a young mother is trying to give her child cannabis oil for medical marijuana for seizure treatment, he would put her in jail if it violates federal law. I would let Colorado do what the Tenth Amendment says. This power, we were never intended to have crime dealing at the federal level. Crime was supposed to be left to the states. Colorado's made their decision, and I don't want the federal government interfering and putting moms in jail who are simply trying to get medicine for their kids. And, and Senator Paul knows that that's simply not the truth. In New Jersey, we have medical marijuana laws, which I've supported and implemented. This is not medical marijuana. This goes a much further step beyond. This is recreational use of marijuana. This is much different. And so while he'd like to use a sympathetic story to, to back up his point, it doesn't work. I'm not against medical marijuana. We do it in New Jersey. But I am against the recreational use of marijuana. If he wants to change the federal law, get Congress to pass the uh, pass a law to change it and get a president to sign I, it. May I respond? Yes, yeah, Senator Paul. Here's the thing is he doesn't want to make it about medical marijuana, but what if New Jersey's medical marijuana contradicts the federal law? He's saying he will send the federal government in and he will enforce the federal law. That's not consistent with the Tenth Amendment. It's not consistent with states' rights, and it's not consistent with a conservative vision for the country. I don't think we should be sending the federal police in to arrest a mother and separate them from their child for giving a medicine to their child for and, seizures. And Jake, I'm I'm gonna, I want to bring, I wanna bring in Ms. Fiorina. I want to bring in Ms. Fiorina to this issue. I very much hope that I am the only person on this stage who can say this, but I know there are millions of Americans out there who will say the same thing. My husband Frank and I buried a child to drug addiction. So we must invest more in the treatment of drugs. I agree with Senator Paul. I agree with states' rights. But we are misleading young people when we tell them that marijuana is just like having a beer. It's not. And the marijuana that kids are smoking today is not the same as the marijuana that Jeb Bush smoked 40 years ago. We do. We sorry, we Barbara. We do need, we do need criminal justice reform. We have the highest incarceration rates in the world. Two-thirds of the people in our prisons are there for nonviolent offenses, mostly drug-related. It's clearly not working. But we need to tell young people the truth. Drug addiction is an epidemic, and it is taking too many of our young people. I know this, sadly, from personal experience. Hugh, Hugh, what I'd like to... Thank you, Jake.